Hi, my name is Sam. I'm on a mission to make transport sustainable using the power of steam. First job this week is to finish off the steam inlet bush for the steam driven circulating pump and the exhaust bush as well. So these are the bushes that are welded onto the, each side of the steam cylinder on the steam pump and they allow the steam supply to be connected to the pump and the, uh, the exhaust plumbing to be uh, connected to the exhaust side. I've got to machine a slot in the exhaust bush uh, which forms a passage as I've done in the, the inlet bush. Once I've machined the slot then both of them need to be radiused on this surface to match that of the steam cylinder on the pump. In order to machine the radius on the end of the bush, I've set up the boring head in the mill and I'm going to use a fly cutter to machine that, that radius. So I've got to set the diameter, the circle on which this, the point of that cutter is going to revolve. I've got to set that at the same diameter as the cylinder onto which this is going to fix. So the radius for that is 57 millimeters. And to make it easier to set up, I've found the edge of this bush with the edge finder and I've set the axis of the spindle 57 millimeters away from that edge. So all I need to do is bring this around, line it up with the face, screw it out until it's just touching it. And uh, as easy as that, the radius will be set perfectly. And then I start the mill up and I advance the bush into the cutter slightly. With the quill feed, I run it up and down slowly and advance once more. It's all going well, it'll give me the radius I need. Perfect. And that just makes it so easy to weld on. I've got the steam inlet bush in the vise and I'm going to do the same as what I did with the exhaust bush. <laughs> Good Lord, what was that? You bastard! Is it on film? <laughs> yeah, it is actually. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to pre-warn you nicely. But... Yeah, yeah. Radius has been machined, now I've got to uh, grind with the angle grinder the weld prep uh, onto each bush. Got hot faster than I uh, anticipated. It's okay, have a solution. I want to be able to rotate it by hand rather than moving my body around it. No more burnt fingers. To let the water into and out of the cylinder when it's actually working, I need to put slots in each end about here and here. And that lets the water enter and exit the cylinder as the piston moves up and down. Except for cleaning the paint off this pipe, it's now ready for welding to the flanges. I finished machining the ports, that went quite well, I'm quite happy with that. I've scribed a line down here while I was in the, the mill uh, to use as a, as a reference point for when I weld the valve chambers and the flanges onto the pipe. So I'm just waiting now on the flanges and the remaining parts for the valve chamber to be delivered by the water jet cutter. While I wait for those parts, I'm going to make a start on the stuffing boxes uh, for the water and steam end of the pump. Because the water end of the pump is provided with a tail rod, 
there's two stuffing boxes to be fitted um, and then another one for the steam end. And the reason for having a tail rod on this pump is to balance the boiler pressure which is continuously acting on the cylinder. And the pump's only pumping against a very small head. So if this pump didn't have a tail rod, boiler pressure would always be tending to force the piston rod out of the pump and that would make the pump run very rough. So which is one of the issues with the old Worthington Simpson circulating pump I'm using at the moment. The tail rod should save a lot of steam and it will also make, make sure the pump runs smoothly. But it does mean one extra stuffing box. The assembly consists of the stuffing box, which is going to be SG iron. The crossed squares are the turns of packing, which in this case is a carbon Teflon packing. The boxes have a nut, a bronze guide and a bronze backing up ring. And the boxes are pressed into the cover, each cover. I'm going to machine the actual box itself for starters. Uh, they're the same, all three are the same, so I'll machine three of them and then I'll get on to the, the other components. What I'm doing here is setting the height of the cutting tool and I want it to be set just slightly high so when the cutting point pinches the rule against the side of the work I want the rule to be just slightly closer towards me at the top than at the bottom and what that will mean is as the cutting forces on the on the boring bar cause it to flex it won't deepen the cut it'll actually make the cut slightly shallower so it will be more controlled. Look at that, storm rolling in. Been a lovely day in the workshop and uh, just to finish the day off nicely we've got a storm rolling in from the south. It's now time to cut the thread on the stuffing box. I've got this uh, Ifanga uh, thread cutting tool. It's a clever design, so it's pre-ground to produce the uh, 60 degree V, so that all I have to do to sharpen it is, uh, is grind a bit more off here and then uh, adjust it up. And that's it. Yeah. Not to worry.
So we want a pitch of 1.5. That looks to be so. Do the trick. Our first stuffing box. I'll machine the, the next stuffing box and then I'll put them in the lathe back the other way and I'll just break these edges and, uh, and that'll be all. All of the stuffing boxes for the pump are now complete. Check out this box of goodies. Some of the profiles have been completed by, uh, by the water jet cutter. So all of the 5mm, uh, 8mm and 10mm profiles have been cut. These are the brackets uh, which weld onto the side of the smoke box for the pump to mount onto. These form actually the uh, dividing section of the uh, suction and discharge passage on the water end of the pump. These 8mm profiles are part of the suction and discharge valve chambers. And actually this here, uh, that slot, is, uh, is actually where the water is sucked into the valves. End caps for the valve chambers. So there's the 12mm, 16mm and 20mm um, parts to come. Hopefully they won't be too far away. These are the 10mm profiles. These are welded to those and form the brackets to mount the pump onto the bracket which is welded onto the side of the smoke box. And these plates are welded to those triangular brackets I showed you a moment ago and form a sort of mounting pad for the pump. So the centre piece of the pump is here essentially. Uh, water end cylinder and the steam end cylinder up here. And of course it's mounted vertically, not horizontally. But the great thing about water jet cutting is I don't need to do any real clean up on these surfaces. There's no scale to, to grind off. The team at Precision Water Jet where these profiles are being cut were kind enough to let me join them while they were cutting the 10mm profiles so I could learn a bit more about how the cutting process works. So the machine once it's nested will show us where we've cut and what it's working on next. You set up the speed of the cut uh, which determines the quality of the finish. So there you can see this is the top and the water's cutting like this and as it goes faster the water leans over 
and leaves a tail like that. Okay. And when you get near the edge, we slow the cutting down and the water stands up so it goes around the corner. Right. And then it speeds up and it races along again. Then it slows down and it goes around. So you can see that yeah. there where it's hanging off. So the cut's like that. As it gets to the end here, you can see that the water's stood up mm -hmm. because we've just slowed it down. That's all. As you slow down, it can stand up straight and go around the corner. Interesting. So, and that's a lot of gas cutting does the same as but, but, but. Yeah, pretty much. So we did, we, A, it's not being work hardened by heat. Mm -hmm. So you, if for cleaning up and welding and polishing or even uh, grinding, you haven't got that hard bit left over in the skirt down the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, but for cutting holes, you go quite slow and you get a beautiful cut like that, plus or minus 0.1 mil. And so again, for machine, if you want to run a drill through that, it hasn't work hardened. So yep. it's going to cut quite cleanly. I'm onto the gland nuts which tighten the packing in the stuffing boxes. First step is to rough out the SGI and round stock. Pretty good. Beautiful. Just take this one skim off here. Knew I'd do that. No one saw anything. There's not much room in the centerpiece of the pump to get in there with a spanner and tighten up the nuts and a hex spanner is not really going to fit. So I've designed the gland nuts to be tightened with a hook spanner which is definitely nothing new because basically all steam pumps are designed to use a hook spanner to tighten the nuts. So I'm machining slots in the outside diameter of the nuts for the hook spanner to engage in.
The two gland nuts which fit in the centerpiece are complete. The slots are designed for use with a tool like this and uh, makes it nice and easy to tighten the, the gland but it also means that unlike having a hex there's more positions and when you're trying to reach inside the centerpiece which has a restricted opening that makes it a lot easier to to get to get a purchase on the nut and tighten it. The third nut is a steel nut because it has to be welded to a tube which encases and protects the tail rod. This slightly tapered surface is actually to ensure that lubricating oil flows into the piston rod as opposed to off the side of the nut so there will be a lubricator supplying oil about where my finger is and that will just drip lubricating oil onto the surface which will flow in and surround the piston rod and lubricate it nicely. When I designed this boiler I didn't actually design it to burn nails and we've been burning a lot more nails than I anticipated so the grate wasn't designed to rot and dump anything that couldn't be burned whereas typically locomotive boilers would be designed to burn coal and there'd be a lot of clinker and incombustible components that would have to be dumped off the grate. So with wood that problem doesn't exist except when you burn wood with nails in it. What I've got to do um, in the absence of a, an electromagnet on the end of a lance is climb into the firebox and get all of the nails out. So I've designed the firehole door, it's, it's too small to fit through the door but I've designed it so that the door can be removed and the opening uh, in the back end is then large enough for me to fit in quite comfortably and uh, get the nails out. Hiding in there. Anyone there? No. Oh, hello. Oh my god. You want to recycle us? Of course. You want another bucket? Huh? No. Oh yeah. I didn't realize it was full. Right, you want it in there or not? Uh, no, 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 no. Here we're looking into the firebox at the design of the grate. You can quite clearly see it's made of steel plates with an, a large number of holes. That even provides more air than is really necessary. The plates aren't lined up because the, each grate plate floats and that allows it to accommodate to expansion. And uh, if any nails get stuck between the gaps, then it doesn't cause the plates to warp. But that should give you a general idea of the design of the, the grate in this boiler. Burning wood fuel allows it to be very simple, it doesn't need to rock, but as I said, it would be nice if it rocked because we're trying to burn nails and well, they don't burn, so it'd be nice to be able to drop them straight into the ash pan. Uh, but anyway, it didn't take too much to clean it off, there's a year's worth of nails accumulated in there, 
so it's uh, not, not a big job. Regularly fishing nails out with a magnet would make a big difference uh, for a start. Well, that's it till next time. Thanks for watching, and a huge thank you to everyone who is supporting the project, whether that's by becoming a patron, donating directly to the project, or just lending a helping hand. Thank you, I really appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and have a look at my page on Patreon. I'd love you to join the project as a patron to help me on my mission to make transport sustainable using the power of steam.